Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you're joining us from for this third um, session of the webinar series with My Needed Water Academy. Uh, the first session provided an overview of non-revenue water, while the second session dealt with a specific strategy that may need that used to reduce non-revenue water. That's the use of uh, district metering areas or DMAs. Today, for this last session in this series, we shift to a new topic, uh, wastewater management. So aside from providing potable water to 9.8 million customers, Mainila is also responsible for the collection and treatment of used water through its sanitation and sewerage services. So this webinar will provide an overview of wastewater management and why it is important. The speaker will also briefly cover um, relevant Philippine environmental laws, the wastewater treatment process, and challenges encountered by Mainilad in implementing its sewerage and septage services. Um, today's session, similar to the previous two, will begin with a presentation of about 30 minutes by the speaker, followed by a question and answer with the audience. And you can begin asking your questions even during the presentation by typing your questions in the chat box. I will read them out loud uh, after the presentation. So we are privileged today to have with us Maini Led's uh, Assistant Vice President for Septage, uh, uh, Septage Management Department, uh, Mr. John Aldrin Pangan. John is a civil and sanitary engineer with over 20 years experience in the industry. He joined Mainilad shortly after its privatization and was part of the non-revenue water special project where he contributed to the development and management of large water meters. He has established large meter databases, conducted seminars on metering guidelines, took charge of the water audit reports of all 15 business centers of Mainilad, while continuously monitoring and analyzing individual customer consumption patterns for efficient meter sizing. After nine years uh, in water, he has left as head of planning and support services for meter management to begin his career in wastewater management as head of sewer service connections, which oversees the development of Mainilad sewerage system connecting customers and ensuring sewer network reliability. Thereafter, he was promoted to head of sewer network management. So after eight years, he became the head of the septage management department, developing and implementing Mainilad sanitation services for the West Zone of Metro Manila. Colleagues, please join me in welcoming Mr. John Pangan. John, over to you. Hello. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. So thank you, Pia, uh, for that introduction. So, so again, as mentioned, I'll be uh, sharing and discussing today uh, about uh, wastewater management, so an introduction to wastewater management. So today I will be uh, sharing with everyone uh, why treat wastewater and how much water do we use, we actually use, and status of wastewater management globally and locally, and the effects of not treating wastewater. So for the Mainila, the wastewater management, so I'll be sharing with you, so why we treat wastewater at a glance of uh, Mainila's wastewater activities and services. And I'll be uh, telling you uh, about uh, a background on the rehabilitation of Manila Bay here in the Philippines. For wastewater treatment, uh, basic wastewater terminologies and sewer systems of Manila and some of the basic treatment process, the general treatment processes and the challenging we are encountering in treating wastewater here in uh, the Philippines. So just a terminologies, uh, basic terminologies that we'll be using during the discussion is that uh, first is uh, what is wastewater? So wastewater is used water generated from any combination of domestic and non-domestic, so more or less coming from commercial and uh, agriculture and industrial and domestic households. So it may also include the stormwater sewer inflows or infiltration because later on we will be discussing I'll be discussing uh, the combined system. Now for sewage, 
is a wastewater or liquid waste coming from the homes um, and buildings and the like. Now for sewer, it's a conduit carrying sewage or wastewater. So more or less these are the pipelines. Now for sewerage, uh, a system or process, this is a system or process of conveying sewage by a network or pipeline and treating or processing. Now for septic tank, it is a tank or a watertight tank, multi-chambered receptacle that receives sewage from these houses or buildings for basic wastewater treatment. So it only treats uh, wastewater for the basic process. And for septage, uh, waste collected from septic tanks. So why big wastewater? So how much actually uh, do we use water uh, every day? So according to the study conducted by University of the Philippines, our customers use about around 35 gallons of water per day. So more or less these are water that comes from uh, washing of dishes, loads, bathing, uh, watering of plants, cleaning of house, cars, uh, etc. So more or less, uh, it totals around 35 gallons of water per day. And uh, how much wastewater is generated from this used water? So more or less, it's, uh, it's uh, based on computation, this 80% of water becomes wastewater. So uh, more or less, that is about 28 gallons of water every day for a Manila customer. And then globally, uh, oh, sorry. so globally over 80% of wastewater generated uh, by society flows back into the ecosystem without even being treated or reused. Okay, so this is a global uh, uh, number. And in the Philippines, as of uh, 2019, 5% of Filipino families have an improved sanitation uh, uh, facility. So more or less, uh, these families only use uh, uh, pit latrines without a slab or, or platform or, or platform and hanging latrines or bucket latrines are being used by, by uh, Filipinos with improved sanitation. And only 6% of Filipino families practice open defecation. And then only less than 10% of uh, uh, here in the Philippines are connected to the sewer system. So more or less, uh, uh, it is, uh, this is the reason why uh, there are difficulty in connecting to uh, or, or accessing to available sewer system here in the Philippines. So only 10%, less than 10%. Now in Metro Manila, as of now, as of uh, second quarter of this year, currently, uh, we already have 25% connected to the sewer system. So this is mainly because of the efforts and projects being implemented by the two concessionaires, which is Manila and Manila Water, in uh, the whole Metro Manila. So we have increased it to 25%. So what are the effects of uh, uh, not treating wastewater? So uh, for the three categories, health, environment, and economy, there are effects. So let me discuss each and every one. So first for, for health, uh, more or less, we, we, we might uh, have uh, health problems like diarrhea, hepatitis, and leptospirosis. All, all of us are aware that diarrhea is uh, uh, having a loose water is to the person more frequently than usual. So if uh, our water is polluted and not treated, we might end up having this, uh, diseases like the hepatitis, uh, type of viral liver infection, and leptospirosis. It also includes cholera, typhoid, and other uh, waterborne diseases. And then uh, for the environment, uh, this example is from uh, the, the river Thames in UK in 2011. It might also lead to fish kill. So more than 450,000 tons of sewage overflow combined with warm, dry weather flow and low river flows resulted to low oxygen levels that uh, resulted to uh, fish kills in this area. And then uh, another example is uh, in Boracay Island here in the Philippines in Aklan. So it resulted to 
uh, uh, pollution in, in, in the beach. So as you can see in the picture, so this is a result of course of uh, non-treatment of wastewater being discharged directly to the, uh, to the beach or the bodies of water. So uh, for, uh, uh, for, from poor sanitation, so it resulted to around uh, 77.8 billion per year, equivalent to 1.5 US dollars per year. So the effects are for the welfare impact and tourism, only 5%, and 23% of this is uh, impact in water. And as you can see, for health impact, it's uh, a large number, which is 72%. So we really need to, to, uh, to, to be aware that we really need to treat the uh, wastewater. So next is, uh, let me now share with you the wastewater management that we're being made here in Manila. So why, why we treat wastewater? So first, we really need to uh, treat uh, the wastewater being generated here uh, to improve the health and sanitation of the environment and our customers and the public. And we have also a concession agreement in term extension plan with the government, which is until 2037. So Manila is handling the west concession area of Metro Manila, while for the east is Manila water. So we have until 2037 in, in the CA2 to implement all uh, our projects or plant projects. And we also have the Supreme Court decision or the Mandamus, Manila Bay Mandamus. This is to clean up and rehabilitate Manila Bay. So later on, as I've mentioned, I will be sharing with you uh, the rehabilitation that we are being, uh, that we are doing in Manila Bay. And for the Republic Act 92754, which is called the Clean Water Act of 2004. So what are the service obligations of Manila? So first, uh, it is our obligation to make connections to a public sewer. So uh, we have the uh, separate system, existing separate system in, in uh, West Concession, wherein we really need to connect all existing buildings within or within the range of, of around 30 to 50 meters away from the existing sewer network. So we really need to connect all of the existing establishment to the existing uh, sewer lines for us to be able to capture all the wastewater and treat them prior to discharge to the bodies of water. Second is the wastewater standards. So we really need to comply with all the national standards and environmental laws. So all of the projects being put up by Manila, the wastewater treatment facilities, all of them complies with the laws and standards. So we will ensure that they comply with the laws and, and effluent standards. And for septic and sanitation cleaning, these are uh, the ones that uh, uh, in the absence of a uh, treatment facility in the area, we conduct and we offer septic tank cleaning and sanitation services to these areas. So uh, septic and sanitation cleaning refers to the same thing of the so, so uh, we are doing this once every five to seven years. So five years for those that are uh, being uh, located in sword areas, and then uh, seven years for those uh, establishments or buildings that are connected or, or located in a combined system area. So later on, I will be discussing the difference between the separate and combined sewer system. So for the services, we have two. Uh, we have the sewerage and sanitation. For the sewerage, we have here the plant operations and network maintenance. Since uh, for sewerage, it's already covered by uh, wastewater facilities with sewer networks. So uh, Manila is the one maintaining these uh, facilities and at the same time conducting preventive and reactive maintenance to sewer network. So we provide sewer service connections for those customers that are not yet connected and maintenance and repair, uh, both for the sewer connections and the sewer lines. So we also attend to customer requests, especially those that, uh, that are experiencing pluggings, their connection, 
So we provide the service. So operate and maintain wastewater treatment facilities and our plan for expansion of the sewer coverage. So that's for sewerage. Next for sanitation is we, we have these services uh, uh, wherein we provide septic tank sludging to those that are not yet connected and uh, operate and maintain septage treatment plants. So we have three uh, in the West Concession, uh, two in the North and one in the South that covers the whole Manila area. We also attend to customer requests. So usually the requests of these customers are uh, dislodging of their septic tanks, wherein when they uh, experience plugging or full, uh, if their septic tanks are already full, so they, they request for a dislodging service from Manila. We also have fleet maintenance since uh, uh, we have plenty of vacuum truck units, equipment that are being used to dislodge the septic tank. So as you can see in the picture here, the upper right. So this is an example of our video then. And then plan for sanitation coverage expansion. This is to show you just uh, for, for the uh, existing water reclamation facilities of Manila. So we have 22. So we have different technologies uh, that are being used depending on the uh, area wherein the plant will be constructed, depending on the quality of wastewater in the area. And of course, sometimes depending on the uh, lot area available. So as you can see here, we have uh, conventional activated sludge with different capacities. We have SBRs and we have MBBR and STM aerator. We also have our uh, Tondo pumping plant, which we're in, uh, it will, later on it will be converted to a uh, full treatment uh, facility. We also have stabilization pond. And as I have mentioned, these are the three uh, to, to, to the right, these are the three existing septage facilities that serves uh, uh, the whole Manila concession area. So we have uh, the Alabang Sapote, uh, our uh, one and only plant in the south that serves the whole south area, and two for the north, Project 7 and Dagat Dagatan. So this is for uh, the facilities of uh, Manila. So this is to show you the major wastewater catchments in uh, Manila. So we have several. So in green, uh, this is to show the existing facilities already located in the West Concession. And for the red ones, these are the ongoing projects that are being implemented as of this moment. And uh, uh, for the 18, uh, others, uh, other treatment facilities here are still on, on process, on study, uh, for us to be able to cover the whole West concession area by end of 2037. So we are planning to, uh, to have a 100% coverage at the end of our concession, which is 2037. So as you can see here, in Quezon City, West Catchment, we have uh, 15 small water reclamation facilities. So we've uh, uh, decentralized this area mainly because of the availability of lots. But for the others, we have only one uh, facility serving a, a bigger area. So it only means that we have acquired here a, a, a lot uh, sufficient already to, to build a one big facility to cover the whole catchment. Now, uh, systems at a glance, so for the sewerage coverage right now, uh, end of uh, second quarter for this year, 2020, we already have a 21% sewer coverage. So uh, this is a uh, process of 19 STPs and 664 million liters of combined sewage treatment capacity with 670 kilometers of sewer lines and uh, 10,000 more uh, sewer miles. Now for septage, for sanitation, we already have 68% uh, coverage uh, as of the moment with uh, three facilities. Two of them are a uh, joint sewage and septage facility and one is pure septage facility. 
So it has a capacity of 1,190 cubic meters per day, combined septage. And we already have dislodged 31,000 septic tanks with a volume of 84,000 cubic meters. We also have a, a total of 89 vacuum truck units being used to, to conduct uh, the uh, septic tank cleaning or our sanitation services. So we have, for the 89, we have 32 BTU4. Uh, those are the, the small vacuum truck units. BTU4 means uh, they have a capacity of four cubic meters. And the rest, the rest are uh, a video 10. So it means it has a capacity of, these are the big trucks, it has a capacity of 10 cubic meters. Tank. So all in all, uh, uh, customers connected to sewer system is about 2 million, offered with sanitation is 6 million. Wastewater treat, treated is about uh, 76 million cubic meters. We also have 111 lift stations or pump stations. Uh, 612 interceptor box systems. So these are the ones used in the combined system to intercept the wastewater in the drainage. And uh, 20 of which are IMS certified wastewater facilities. So right now we'll be, uh, I'll be discussing a basic wastewater treatment. So, Sewer system. So as mentioned, uh, we have two. Uh, we have the separate and the combined. So for the separate, uh, domestic wastewater and storm water are conveyed in two separate pipes. So for the separate system, it only means that uh, the sewer line for separate system only contains pure uh, wastewater, while the drainage only contains pure uh, storm water or rainwater. So this is the separate. So we have. Uh, we have this system, uh, majority of which is located in the Manila. So that is why we are uh, maximizing uh, uh, this system by connecting all uh, buildings within the area uh, for us to be able to capture uh, all of the wastewater in, this, uh, in, in Manila because uh, it has the separate system. So we really need to physically connect them directly to the separate system or the sewer line network. But for the combined, Next is uh, combined is the domestic wastewater. Domestic wastewater is combined with storm water in the same pipe. So uh, uh, versus the separate system for combined, it's a combination of the separate and the drainage. So with this uh, system, we capture the wastewater in the drainage system during dry weather flow. Okay, so that's for the combined. So currently, we are already implementing this system, the combined system, comparing it to separate system, mainly because uh, it will uh, be more uh, feasible for us uh, because we will only be constructing uh, uh, the IBS, uh, in short pipe lanes of conveyance and lift stations. So in terms of timeline, in, implementing projects, it is more feasible and more shorter and more uh, economical for, for us, for this strategy, for us to be able to hit our uh, commitment by end of 2037. Because if we are to implement a separate system, we really need to uh, excavate or, or dig all our roads for us to be able to lay on the uh, sewer lines and connect them again physically or directly to the sewer lines. Uh, as compared to a combined system where we will, we will be needing only to intercept the drainage line. So we don't do physical connections of, of buildings uh, in the combined system. So the next slide will show you the, uh, the details. Again, so the source is 80% of, uh, of water used will be uh, the wastewater from the household. So other households that are not yet connected to the system uh, directly discharges their wastewater in the septic tank. Then eventually it overflows to the drainage system ending up to the receiving bodies of, of water. So this is, uh, this is uh, the reason why we really need to uh, clean uh, the septic tanks for us to be able to avoid overflow of septic tanks, which will end up into the receiving bodies of water. 
So for collection and transport, we, we clean the septic tanks and then treat it to a septage treatment facility. We're in uh, the effluent is uh, being discharged to a receiving bodies of water, but it complies with the effluent uh, standards by the government. And the sludge, uh, it will be disposed and collected by a third party, then converted to a uh, soil conditioner. So this is for the for, uh, uh, combined system. And for the separate system, so, Customers or buildings are directly connected to the sewer line or the separate system we're in. We have the pump stations and lift stations that will convey the wastewater to a sewage treatment facility prior to discharge to the receiving bodies of water. So we will be treating the wastewater and then uh, discharge the effluent to the nearby uh, bodies of water. And then the sludge is being collected also by a third party to be converted to a soil conditioner. So this is for the separate system. Now, as mentioned, the combined system is utilizing the drainage system. So what we do is we put up an IBS. So the IBS is the interceptor box system. So we intercept the wastewater that is present in the drainage system during dry weather. So during dry weather. Flow. So the wastewater in the drainage is conveyed to the combined system wherein it will be pumped to the uh, nearby sewage treatment facility and then treat the wastewater prior to discharge to the receiving body. So this is for the combined system. Okay. So for the sewer, uh, for the separate and combined areas in Manila, so as you can see in the map, uh, we already have uh, implemented uh, the combined system and the separate system uh, located in Central Manila, Dagat Dagatan, uh, in Makati, Alabang, and QC West, portion of QC West is in green. So what we are doing right now in these areas are just maximizing the uh, is the system by connecting uh, all of the customers in the area. So currently right now, uh, there are still areas wherein they are not yet directly connected. So uh, in short, they are discharging their wastewater uh, or on the, on the drainage. So we really need to, to fast track uh, this, this program for us to be able to uh, connect 100% of the customers in these green areas. Now for the blue one, a uh, portion of Quezon City West also, uh, and uh, the new ones are the Pasay and the Paranaque stage. So for the blue one, we have implemented here a, a combined system. So all in all, as of second quarter, we already have a 21% coverage for my needed area. So basic wastewater treatment, so just a, just a basic. So, so for the preliminary, for the treatment process, uh, from the sewer line, the conveyance system, uh, we pump or, or, or we convey the, the wastewater to the treatment facility in the first uh, have a, a screening. For the preliminary, we have a screening and, grit, and grease removal. So for this uh, process, we will be removing the, the solid wastes uh, coming from the, the, the pipelines or, or the, the wastewater. And then we also remove uh, basically the, the grits uh, present in the, in the grease, oil and grease. And then next is for the primary, we will then uh, remove the uh, settleable solids and then some of the uh, floating uh, organics. Uh, from the from the wastewater, and then for the secondary, we we already do the secondary treatment wherein we aerate the wastewater, and then uh, have a secondary clarifier for us to be able to 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 get the the, the solids or the settleable solids in the system. Then lastly, for the tertiary, uh, we do 
disinfection so it can be a uh, lorination uv or also so these are the the basic treatment then prior to effluent uh, prior to discharge the effluent uh, will be discharged to the nearby body so we also have a sludge treatment process when we have a uh, uh, digester and thickener and then at the same time, uh, the bisolids. The bisolids are actually being held by a third party. And they are the ones uh, disposing or converting the bisolids into a soil conditioner and others are uh, making it a fertilizer. So for the existing uh, service provider or holder of bisolids, uh, they are using currently uh, to, to, to their uh, corn plantation, I think. Uh, in the province of Pampanga. So that's our current uh, order. So this is the basic. Now, uh, to share with you the major challenges that we are encountering in, in wastewater is uh, first for sewerage, the excessive debris and garbage, specifically for, for currently that we are uh, implementing the combined system. Uh, as you all know, uh, we've been intercepting wastewater from the drainage and uh, uh, we cannot avoid that uh, the garbage from streets or open manholes or whatsoever, uh, everything ends up in the drainage system we're in. If we capture this, the, the flow from the drainage, basically we are also capturing the, the garbage that are present in the drainage system. That is why uh, we have difficulty or we need to uh, clean every day our interceptor box system. So I, I don't have the numbers, but uh, every day I think uh, we've been uh, hauling uh, several sacks of, of garbage uh, in our uh, interceptor box system. Because if we don't do this, there will be no flow coming in or being captured or will be captured by our uh, facilities or the, the conveyance because it, it will just overflow to the to the drainage system. So in short, if these interceptor box systems are clogged with this debris or garbage, there will be uh, we won't be able to treat this uh, wastewater in the area. The next step, uh, step actually in uh, the interceptor box system because we are currently using uh, stainless steels and these are comparing it to a sewer manhole or sewer line. Uh, these IBS are only you know, shallow and then easily opened by, by, by those that uh, wanted to, to, to get the, the steels because they, all of them are uh, made of stainless steels. So uh, currently those are the challenge that we have encountered, but the solution to that is uh, we've used concrete reinforced concrete for, for them to be able to realize that uh, they cannot sell uh, these uh, structures when it's uh, made up of, of concrete. And for the uh, excessive debris and garbage, the solution here is just to uh, more frequent cleaning of IBS and coordination with the local government to, to enhance their program in waste segregation and waste management. For the industrial wastewater intrusion, uh, there are, uh, of course, this is a challenge because uh, uh, sometimes we cannot identify the illegal discharge of, of industrial wastes in the drainage. So if there's uh, a case, uh, as you can see in the picture here in the upper right, uh, we, we encounter a process upset in our facility. So efforts are now being made by the catchment engineers for us to be able to trace uh, this industrial uh, establishment discharging uh, discharging uh, wastes into the drainage without uh, proper treatment. And then uh, lastly is the drainage improvement projects. Since we are implementing combined system, we are capturing wastewater from the drainage if there are drainage improvements being made by the government, uh, sometimes they realign, sometimes they relocate. 
So if if that happens, our IBS in the area will will be of no use, mainly because there will be no more flow in the IBS. So uh, with the current situation right now, there are a lot of drainage improvements here in the Philippines. So we really need to adjust uh, based on the plans of, of the government on where uh, these projects will be implemented, where they're where they will be uh, relocated for us to be able to, uh, to, to still capture the design flow in the area. Because if we don't do this, uh, we won't be able to, to treat the expected flow, expected wastewater flow in the area. So again, uh, the, the solution here is to, to proper coordination with the local government in a particular barangay or city. For sanitation, the challenges are two. First is the track ban for vacuum trucks used in the sludging. So here in the Philippines, we have a, uh, uh, a track ban. So our trucks uh, we, with, the, uh, with the limit in, in weight, so they are not allowed to travel along major roads here in Metro Manila. So they, we, they only give a window, I think uh, around, uh, 10 a.m. to 3 or 4 in the afternoon, which is very, for us, uh, the, uh, it is not productive for us, mainly because, of course, uh, we really need to, to maximize the, the trips of our trucks uh, to serve uh, our customers requesting for uh, these sludging services, especially when they already encounter clogging or their septic tanks are already full. And, then, and at the same time, we won't be able to completely implement our program, our plans and programs, mainly because of the track ban. Now, uh, our solution here is that we've been coordinating with other cities and uh, fortunately, uh, only, only a few are, are, uh, are not exempt, exempting us from, from the track ban. But the other cities are uh, allowing our trucks, especially when they see our vacuum trucks, uh, our logo, Manila, and they know the, the importance and benefits of us cleaning the septic tanks of their uh, community or city. And lastly, is low acceptance rate of the sludging services. So again, our customers or other others still don't uh, understand and realize the benefits of of cleaning their septic tanks. Others are thinking that it's only a, uh, a, uh, uh, a program we're in. Uh, they don't want to be disturbed because uh, they need to, uh, because one of our policies here is that we are not uh, responsible in opening and closing the manual of the septic tanks. And also we are not responsible in locating the septic tanks of the customer. So others, they don't want to be disturbed mainly because they need to, open and break the, the manhole covers or their, of their uh, septic tanks and others have difficulty because they don't already know uh, the location of their septic tanks. So the, the acceptance uh, is very low, especially right now uh, during the pandemic because uh, they don't want any, anyone or, 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 or an activity that might uh, be the cause of them having the virus. So right now during the pandemic, it's a very low acceptance uh, for us in terms of offering the dislodging services. So these are the, the, the major challenges uh, for Manila in, in wastewater. And uh, for the impacts of solid waste, uh, as uh, I already mentioned this lacking of drain system, uh, the super appurtenances, interceptors and weirs, plugging of bar screen and plugging of pumps. Yes, uh, one more reason is if the pumps are plugged with debris, it won't be able to, uh, to, to pump wastewater to the, uh, to the treatment facility. Again, there will be no more flow, uh, no way for us to treat the wastewater in the area. So it will just overflow to the drainage system if the pumps are Club. Next is uh, I'll be sharing with you the uh, uh, Manila Bay rehabilitation that we are doing here in the Philippines. Okay. 
just to uh, to tell you a short background, early in the in the early 1900s, so Manila Bay actually is the pride of our country, mainly because of the uh, sunset in the Manila Bay. So the glory days of Manila Bay during this time, as you can see the early 1900s, there are a few establishments in the area. So this is the Ross Boulevard in the upper right. And then you can see that uh, people can actually uh, take a bath in, in the Manila Bay because it's it's clean and it's safe for us to be able to, to, to walk around the area, uh, breathe fresh air, and even take a, take a bath. But uh, during this time, it's also the start of, uh, of uh, uh, the business uh, starting to rise around the area or around the bay. So it, it started to, to have uh, or to, to construct buildings around the area uh, one at a time. And then it came, it came to a point that uh, the glory days of Manila was over. Uh, the glory days of Manila Bay was over mainly because uh, pollution begins to intensify in the area, mainly because of the uh, uh, there are already plenty of establishments in the area without proper waste management. So others are already uh, directly discharging to the bay, don't have a treatment facility in their uh, building, and then uh, uh, commercial establishments or actually in hotels, casinos, and the like are already present in the area. So what happened is that currently uh, Manila Bay is, uh, as you can see in the picture, but uh, this is before the rehabilitation actually. So this is Manila Bay today. And uh, our DNR or the Department of Environment and Natural Resources tested the pickled polyform level of Manila Bay during that time, during that time of last January. So uh, the results are 330 million per 100 ml of, of uh, fecal coliform level, which is way above the 100, the, the acceptable level of 100 MPN per 100 ml, which is, that is the level for, for uh, the water to be safe for swimming and recreation. So what the government did was uh, to, to implement and uh, launch the battle for Manila Bay last January of 2019. So it has an administrative order for in number one to expedite the rehab and restoration of the coastal and marine ecosystem of Manila Bay. And second is to create a task force that will coordinate with relevant agencies in the implementation of plans and uh, programs. So, Mindela is part of the task force because MWSS is the one is a governing agency, part of the Mandamus agency, actually, that uh, needs to, to implement and part of the agencies that need to support this uh, program, which is the uh, uh, rehabilitation of Manila Bay. So when the Manila Bay started uh, or, or launched last January 2019, it was... Uh, it was uh, uh, part of the, or, or different government agencies were present during this time. So all of the uh, Mandamos uh, agencies are present, including MWSS, the concessionaires, Manila and Manila Water. And it, it is also done simultaneously in uh, Maribeles, Bataan, Guagua, Pampanga, and other provinces. So it is really a, a joint effort of all uh, government and non of government agencies for us to be able to, to at least save Manila Bay. So part of the activities during that day, during the launch, uh, we've deployed teams for us to be able to start uh, the activities in uh, cleaning up the Manila Bay. So one of our contributions during that time was to dislodge the uh, Manila Zoo because of uh, lack of treatment uh, facility within the zoo. So currently, uh, during the time, they are directly discharging the, uh, the wastes in this uh, big canal of them, which ends up in Manila Bay. So we help uh, clean and discharge uh, and dislodge this, uh, 
is a big canal within the Manila Zoo. And then we also dislodge all of the existing septic tanks in Manila Zoo, wherein uh, during that time we, we found out that uh, it was really, uh, for several years, it is not yet clean, clean or dislodged even once. So we've located all the, the, the septic tanks in the zoo and helped them clean and dislodge all the, all the existing septic tanks in the area. So how can Manila further help or help in the further cleanup of Manila Bay? So what we did, we had a, uh, a memorandum of understanding with DNR. So MPIC or Metro Pacific Incorporated is, uh, is uh, uh, through Manila committed that uh, we will be helping uh, uh, in the Manila Bay rehab. So uh, uh, this is uh, during uh, the time of May 2019. So part of the MOA is we will be adopt, adopting an estero or, 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 or later on I will be showing to you the, the projects which are included in the MOA, our commitment to help rehab Manila Bay. And this is to show you uh, the activities and plans of, of Manila in rehabilitating. So there was a, a time that uh, uh, we've cleaned up this, the, the bay in, uh, where is this? In, in Manila Bay itself. In uh, Baseco, yeah, in Baseco. So there's a program during that time that uh, we really pick up all the trashes present in the shores uh, within the Manila Bay. And then uh, and during this time, we've already uh, been uh, present in activities uh, during cleanup that are being uh, launched by, by the government. Cleanup in, in every base of... of Vite, Manila, and other areas. So we're, we are always present and participating in these activities. And we also have a project in Central Manila Sewer System where in uh, the profile of this uh, facility is it is a 140 million liters per day capacity. And uh, we will be putting this up in a area in Manila to, to serve the whole uh, uh, Central Manila under the West Concession area. So. Right now, it's an uh, ongoing that acquisition. There's an area of 2.7 hectares. And the conveyance system that we will be putting up is uh, approximately four kilometers uh, with a diameter of 1.2 meters. And then uh, we will be putting this up in, in roads like the main roads of Recto and uh, Road 10, as you can see in the details. So eventually after we put up this uh, facility, it will eventually help uh, treat or lower down the, the pollution load in Manila Bay. For sanitation services, we also conduct or committed during that time uh, 12,000 septic tank clean per year in Manila area. So last 2019 and 2020, we have a 12,000 target and we have a uh, accomplished an actual dislodge septic tanks of 14,000 or more. So all in all, with a target of 24,000, we've dislodged 28,837 of septic tanks in the area. This is to help, uh, again, uh, minimize and avoid discharge, directly discharge of wastewater to the creeks, esteros, and canal by uh, cleaning their septic tanks and avoid overflow of their septic tanks. So currently, we are continuously doing this activity, uh, this 2021. Again, our target is 12,000. For the new sewer service connection, uh, we also have uh, activity for this, wherein we've already connected uh, 3,407 last 2019 and 2,712 last 2020 for domestic uh, accounts or customers. So all in all, for the last two years, we've uh, connected already a 6,119 customers. This is for the separate system in Manila because in Manila, uh, we have a separate system in the area. Uh, for the combined, it is implemented outside the central Manila. 
And for commercial, we've connected 258 accounts. That's 2019 and 2020. We also have uh, what we call the Cubeta Talks. Cubeta uh, means toilet or the uh, uh, water closet. So we really need to think of, of a word that will be catchy. Uh, during our program. So this is, uh, these talks are uh, exclusively for, for commercial establishments because we really need to focus on connecting uh, non-domestic customers to the system for us to be able to have a huge impact really in, uh, in uh, avoiding overflow of their wastewater to the receiving bodies of water. So we've uh, uh, conducted this COBETA talks so it was launched last 2019 to enlighten commercial establishments because uh, they really need to, to have a, a deeper understanding and awareness on the importance of connecting to the sewer system. So we've invited the speakers from the NREMB, uh, from the Manila uh, LGU, from the Sanitation Department, and uh, from the Laguna Lake Development Authority, LNPA. So they are the speakers, they are the ones who talk during this uh, program for them to be able to encourage all commercial establishment to connect to the existing sewer system of Manila. So this is uh, one of the efforts of Manila during that time. Then as I, as I have mentioned, uh, this is included in the uh, MOA, Memorandum of Understanding, our commit commitment to, to help in the Manila Bay Rehab Adapt an estero. Estero is uh, creeks or small waterways or, or canal. So the program involves laying of sewer lines along the creeks to catch the wastewater of these customers. Because these customers, since they are located in the estero or in the creek, as you can see, they can they are actually literally discharging directly their wastewater to the uh, to the estero, which ends up in Manila Bay. So we really need to put up um, uh, sewer lines or interceptors uh, for these establishments or house, houses that are, are uh, actually located in the estero. So that's the project of Manila. And just to show you uh, the areas, we already have uh, implemented or completed the Estero de la Reina, phase one, that's 2019. So as you can see in the table, the upper right, these the schedules, and from number six to number 23 for study and evaluation. So we just started last 2019, and uh, there's an ongoing study in other areas. And the ongoing projects for completion this year is the Estero de la Reina Phase 2 and Estero de, de San Antonio Abad. And we already have future projects in, in three areas or three Esteros. So this is about uh, equivalent to 1.1 billion peso or approximately $22 million. So this is the investment that Manila is being uh, made to help uh, rehabilitate uh, Manila Bay. Okay, so I think this is my, li my last slide. So just to show you the, the projects, existing projects or ongoing projects in Manila. So we already have, uh, uh, in the north, the Valenzuela, uh, the central Manila, as I, as I mentioned here in, in, in Manila, it will be uh, done in that uh, to, to address the uh, and help uh, rehabilitate Manila. We also have we also have uh, in the south the Cavite City and Kawit, and we also have upgrading. We are upgrading of our, our facilities existing facilities for us to be able to comply with the new effluent standards. We also have the Camana, the Las Piñas, Kupang, Tunasan, and Montinlupa in the south. So uh, all of these in, in green are already uh, ongoing. And then for the red ones, colored in red, are the ones uh, to be implemented uh, in the succeeding years. Okay, so uh, it has uh, it is indicated here the capacity, the technology, and the conveyance for each project. So that's it. So that's my last slide. So thank you, thank you everyone for listening.
Thank you, John. That was a very informative presentation and I think it covered a lot of topics in such a short time. Um, we actually have a question um, in the chat box, right, chat box right now from Alan Morel. Um, he's asking, um, the septic tanks overflow directly connected uh, to sewer lines might affect pipes durability and wastewater treatability. Does Mainilad recommend bypassing existing septic tanks before connecting to a new sewer line. Um, and he mentioned that this also this bypassing can also reduce the need for dislodging services, which you mentioned uh, is quite a challenge during the pandemic. Actually, we don't recommend the, the, the bypassing. Actually, we, uh, is this established, uh, for, for the question, uh, is this uh, regardless if it's a domestic or non-domestic establishment, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what we do is uh, if there's an existing septic tank, we really connect to their, uh, we really connect their septic tanks and uh, collect all the wastewater. But prior to that, if it's a non-domestic establishment, we first test the, the quality of, of their wastewater or, or the septage prior to connection. Because uh, our facilities right now only caters uh, domestic quality of wastewater. So if you're a, a commercial or industrial establishment, we, we just want to make sure if the wastewater you are discharging is, uh, is a domestic quality wastewater. Because if we capture this one, uh, we won't be able to treat it uh, if it contains uh, you know, high, high, uh, high uh, quality, which is non-domestic in, in, in quality. Or, so, so that's our process. Um. Another question from uh, Terry Cho. What is the biggest MBBR ever operated? It seems only um, you have small scale uh, yes. wastewater treatment plants. Yes. Uh, uh, as I've showed, uh, that is only our existing right now because uh, it will be uh, dependent. Uh, we, we are dependent on the on the location, on the size of that that we'll be acquiring and at the same time, the profile of the catchment. And uh, again, uh, it will uh, it will depend on the area. And uh, for our projects, we are annoying. Uh, we are uh, asking for a uh, design and build. So it will be again dependent on the contractor that will be building. If if what will be the technology they, that they will be using, provided they will uh, comply with all the requirements of of Mainilad. So if if uh, a certain company or builder suggested or, or uh, mentioned that they will be using a large-scale MBBR technology. So, so we will be using and implementing it. So it depends again on the, uh, on the profile of the catchment. Um, from Jing Min, um, she's asking, can you let us know the different sanitation service ratio of the people and how many are served by septic tanks versus by combined systems versus by separate systems. So, uh, for, yeah. so right now for the separate, uh, it is uh, around, uh, I think 20, 20% only for, for the Manila. So I'm not sure with the exact numbers, but I can, I, I, I can uh, uh, I'll, be, I'll get back to you for the exact numbers of, of the separate system because uh, as I've mentioned, our existing, uh, we are not already implementing a separate system right now. Uh, majority of our projects, so we are implementing the combined. So our existing uh, uh, separate system right now is only located in Manila, which is only around uh, uh, a, a small, a small number, uh, I think 10 to 20%. That mm -hmm. is why we are concentrating in connecting uh, these customers in the separate system. Now pro, for the profile, profile of what uh, those that have septic tanks versus uh, low septic tanks, yes. Uh, for, for the for the septic tanks, I'm not sure with with the numbers, but currently, uh, our policy right now is that even though we we connect them to the existing uh, sewer uh, sewer sewer lines, we do not ask them to decommission their septic tanks. Because uh, I think for 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 Manila Water, they require the, their customer to to decommission. Once they connected their customer to these sewer lines, they require them to decommission the septic tank. For for Manila, no. 
So because this will help us uh, uh, for, for the preventive maintenance, we will continue to dislodge uh, those customers that have uh, septic tanks. Right now, uh, we don't have the exact numbers, uh, mainly because majority of, of the customers right now, uh, some, some, some of them don't, uh, don't avail of the services of, of Manila. So with this, uh, they waive their, uh, their, their right to clean their septic tank. So with these waived accounts, we are really not sure if they have a septic tank or, or not. So more or less, uh, I can say more or less uh, for the septic tanks currently with our, with our database, more or less majority of, of them have a septic tank, maybe around 60 to 70%. But again, I'm not sure of the numbers, mainly because we, have, we still need to cover areas uh, that are not yet this large at this point in time. And, of, and uh, we also have areas that are not, that are inaccessible. Inaccessible meaning, even if uh, our trucks are there, like our hose, which is 13 linear meters in length, uh, we cannot still penetrate and dislodge these customers in, in, in areas that are, uh, again, inaccessible. So again, we don't have those. How many of them have septic tanks and how many of them uh, are not using septic tanks? Just a follow-up question on that also from Jingmin. Uh, you mentioned uh, the sludging is low and you're, you're, you have a target for the sludging actually, 12,000 per year in 2019. Uh, yes. In Manila. 2020, yes. Um, how many were you able to do in 2019 and 2020? Uh, uh, it, it's, it, it's in the slide. Uh, yeah. It, it, uh, I think it's 14,000. Okay, so I exceeded. Yeah, but yes, yes, we we fixed it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Here. Yeah, actual this sludge is fourteen thousand. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, we have another question from uh from Alan. Um, did Maynila consider exploring COVID nineteen virus tracing in sewer covered areas? This new technology for for treatment or uh, can you repeat the question? For, COVID. Um, yeah, I, did Manila consider exploring COVID nineteen virus tracing in sewer covered areas? So, um, checking for COVID nineteen virus in in uh, sewage. Uh, actually, we've uh, we've just uh, we are just uh, reading articles about uh, presence of COVID. COVID-19 in, uh, in wastewater. And of course, at first, uh, it is very alarming for us that uh, there is a presence of, of the virus in, in wastewater. But uh, there are also articles uh, that we have read that, uh, that it's not that significant or, or the effect would be uh, not, that, uh, uh, not as the same as what we are experiencing right now. And uh, there are also, I think, some other organizations that are that are uh, 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 have a discussion with us in studying this COVID COVID nineteen or virus uh, present in wastewater. But for for Manila, we we did not uh, uh, conduct any study on this one. For I see it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, some questions from um, Shinren. Uh, what is the typical BOD and COD range for sewer or for sewage received in your wastewater treatment plants in Manila and smaller cities? And is that one of the reasons for your not bypassing septic tanks? Actually, uh, uh, for, for the combined system, so this is not in Manila. No? So since it's a combined system, it's very low, mainly because it is uh, diluted. But in uh, but in uh, Manila, uh, definitely this BOD and COD is not also that high, mainly because we are still maximizing the the, the capacity of our sewer lines. Uh, may more or less maybe for the coming years, uh, if we are already connected. Uh, one of the slides. Let me show you. Yeah. This. 
This new sewer service connection in Manila Bay Rehabilitation, 6,000 for domestic and 258. Uh, these numbers uh, show that if, if we have an average of say, two to 3,000 per year significantly, more or less by, by the next few years, the BOD and COD will be higher comparing it to the previous years. So to answer your question, it's not that high. Uh, that is why uh, uh, we connect every single septic tanks that are available or that, uh, that applies for a connection in, in, in Manila. But uh, we have also have a requir requirement that uh, we really need, especially for industrial establishment, we really need to check and, uh, and they should have a certificate or, or a laboratory result showing that uh, their uh, effluent or discharge is really domestic in quality. Because uh, if not, we will not be uh, approving or, or allowing them to connect to our uh, sewer system. But right now, uh, currently, we're experiencing very low BOD and COD, and we are complying with the effluent standards once it is treated in our facilities. Um, related, a little bit related, um, from Jerome, in the future, will the two concessionaires provide 100% sewer coverage in your service areas? Um, or will you still be um, considering on-site, off-site interventions, maybe over the next five to 10 years? Uh, our commitment, our obligation, uh, based on concession agreement, is we will be covering 100% of our uh, concession area by 2037. So currently, that is, that is our commitment. So we really need to fast track our projects right now because both of us are really affected by the pandemic. So we really need to adjust and, and again, fast track our projects in the coming years for us to be able to still meet the 2037 target of 100% sewer coverage. You mentioned the pandemic. Um, I think a lot would also be interested um, to know what other challenges, operational challenges <laughs> you encountered because yeah. of the pandemic and what did you do to address them? This includes maybe what you mentioned earlier about uh, the, the low acceptance for the sludging. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for, for sewerage, uh, the effect of pandemic is, of course, the, the, the non-implementation of the project. So that is already uh, noted. So because uh, we are not allowed to, to, to dig or to deploy teams, so it was a bit uh, slower. So there are a lot of delays, actually, in, in, the, in the project. And then for, for the, the sludging, of course, we have our targets this year. And uh, still, uh, it's our obligation, uh, service obligation to, to, to meet uh, the targets. For the first half of this year, we, we, we've done so much of, uh, you know, uh, the new norm. wherein we really need to, to implement uh, the virtual, uh, virtual uh, campaign. Because prior, uh, before the pandemic, we really do field works. We go to the, the cities, barangay, and present uh, uh, the, the, uh, for, for, for all the customer to be aware uh, on the uh, benefits of this lodging. But uh, during the pandemic, we, we, we cannot implement uh, those things. So we really need to, to think of ways on how are we going to, to uh, deliver it to our customer. So uh, we did virtual campaigns. Uh, we already implemented phone call in, in, uh, inspection or investigation instead of face-to-face -face or, or doing house-to-house. Uh, -house. And yes, the effect of, of, uh, of the pandemic is really quite uh, a lot because uh, previously uh, our acceptance level for this lodging is around 60%. So only six out of 10 customers avail of the service. So uh, every 10 customers that we offer this, the sanitation service, only six. Right now, currently right now, we are only having four, four to five, 4.5 to be exact, or four uh, yeah. acceptance level. So it's really uh, a, a bit uh, challenging, but uh, we still really need to, to, to focus on how are we going to, because these targets are, will remain, 
So if if we have uh, a low accomplishment within the year, so we really need to cap to have uh, a catch up for the succeeding year for us to be able to to continuous to continue with our service obligation with the uh, with the uh, in terms of sanitation coverage. So I think <laughs> I think for the solution we've already uh, did our best for us to be able to 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 do uh, all our activities virtually, but uh, if the co our customers really doesn't like to, you know, uh, because uh, they are really scared of, of the virus, we cannot do anything about it. But considering the what you mentioned, low acceptance rate, you exceeded your targets for 2019 and 2020. So, those that that is that like 60 percent or 50 percent of uh, what you expected would need the sludging for those years i think the question was more, or uh sorry yeah sorry i think that was a follow-up question as well um from jingmin so how i mean how did how can it be low when it exceeded the target it must be for the sludging yeah uh, for, for manila are you talking about the, the manila yes yes yes, yes. The, the, the 12,000 versus 14,000 accomplishment. Ah, the 20,000, yes. Actually, uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm speaking on behalf of the, the, the sludging program. This, uh, this uh, Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program for, for Manila Bay actually is a, is a regular sludging program outside the program sanitation, uh, sanitation coverage for, for Manila. So uh, this, uh, uh, this activity is separate in our service obligation with the, the concession agreement. So this, uh, this regular dislodging of septic tanks, because uh, just to, to discuss with you the, the difference between the dislodging program and this activity is that the dislodging program is, should be uh, customers that are dislodged is once every five years. Mm -hmm. So they need to be dislodged once every five years. So if you dislodge this same customer on the second time within five years, it only counts one. So that's for the dislodging program for sanitation coverage. But for this uh, Manila Bay Rehabilitation Program, it can be annual or it can be um, the frequency of dislodging a septic tank can be more or, or, or uh, say uh, the once every five years, our uh, policy is not applicable to them. Because in, in, in this area, in Manila, especially in Baseco, I think, uh, there is a communal septic tank here or households here are, are have a septic tank that is under design, meaning it's small. It's not enough to cater the, the, the household. So the frequency of dislodging the septic tanks in this area is, uh, say, uh, yearly. Mm -hmm. So 14,000, uh, it can be uh, a single account dislodge for twice already or, or more during this time, because we really, our objective here is to avoid the wastewater to overflow from their septic tanks. So in terms of frequency, this is more. More frequent. The, and uh, this is only program. Manila, yes, Manila area. Frequent. Yeah. Yes. OK. Yes, yes. Not the whole concession. Right. Yes. Uh, the the, the okay. sludging program is different. All right. Uh, so for the whole concession, the rate, the, the acceptance rate is much Lower. It's lower. Yes. Yeah. It's lower. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Yele. Um, he's asking, what percentage of wastewater generated in your service area is treated by the treatment plants that you have at, at present? Um, if you cover 100%, how do you deal with informal settlements? Uh, I don't have the numbers for the specific uh, treatment facility in, in areas, in, in a specific catchment area for the treatment facility. So I can, I can, I can provide, I can give it to, to Aldrin if they really wanted the numbers so I can get back to you. But for informal settlers, uh, uh, of course, informal settlers, they don't have septic tanks. They don't have, uh, uh, majority of them are, are uh, directly discharging to, to the receiving bodies of water. So our solution there is, uh, uh, as I have presented, is one is the 
is uh, providing them a uh, interceptor system to capture uh, their wastewater prior to discharge to, to the bodies of water or the creek. Now for the percentage of wastewater, part of uh, our contribution here is to capture the wastewater of these uh, informal sectors. Other LGUs, their contribution to this Manila Bay rehabilitation is to relocate these informal settlers for them to be able to, you know, uh, avoid or 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 uh, stop their direct discharging of wastewater to these uh, esteros or bodies of water. So it's a uh, it's a uh, a different uh, program both for us and the LGUs. In terms of percent, I think. Uh, Again, it depends on the area. For for Quezon City, I think it, it's, there's there are a lot there is a large number of informal settlers that are located in the Esteros. But currently, uh, we've seen some efforts of the LGUs trimming down or lowering down informal settlers that are uh, located within bridges, uh, 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 Esteros, and. And, and creeks. But in terms of numbers, again, I don't have the, the, the exact number for the percentage. Yeah, we, we can share, if you can share them with Aldrin, we'll put it up on yes, the yes. urban sector group. Um, community. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you, Pia. <laughs> thank you. So um, we have a few more questions left. Um, from Amy, uh, do you have any strategies to increase household willingness to pay for Maynilad's wastewater services? Because you mentioned, um, you cited the, the issue with it being perceived as a, a given service and not something that you pay for. So uh, what, what campaigns have you done to increase or strategies to increase? Your is this pay so payment? Actually, uh, if, if uh, the question is about paying for the services of, of the sludging, is that I think it's more of um, raising uh, the awareness and future willingness to pay. I know now it's a it's like an, a fee that is part of that's embedded the water. in the bill. Yes, but um, ah. like in the future, I would imagine you would want them to pay for wastewater services. Has there been any strategy done to increase the willingness to pay for these services? Actually, uh, we are continuously doing efforts, campaigns, and then as, as I have shown to you, uh, these are one of the campaigns or programs for us to be able to increase awareness in terms of, of wastewater, they, like for example, the, the Cubeta Talks. So we have a separate uh, team actually conducting these uh, this, uh, campaigns. And then uh, for, for team of wastewater management, we just provide them uh, uh, support by uh, by uh, attending the pro program and do, do these uh, technical discussions in terms of the benefits, just like this one, awareness. So continuously we've been uh, coordinating with the uh, local government agencies also, uh, import, uh, most importantly, the, the DNR, LLDA or, or EMB. And then uh, uh, other strategies, actually we are doing this before the pandemic. We invite uh, uh, our customers uh, LGUs and even students, for them to witness, to see uh, what uh, what Manila is doing in in the facilities or or treatment plants, how we treat the wastewater and uh, how clean they they are after treatment. So these are uh, uh, our strategies for us to be able to, uh, to especially the students. Sometimes students, uh, they are the ones uh, talking or, or explaining to their parents that they witnessed or they saw the importance, they, they understand the, 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 the importance of a wastewater treatment facility. So they can also uh, enlighten their parents. And eventually, uh, when, when, when the time comes that we really need to connect uh, their uh, establishments or these customers to the sewer system, they will be... Uh, they already understand the, the, the charges that are already included in, the, in, in their water bill. So we really uh, also, uh, right now, we also maximize the, the social medias present for, for Manila. So everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or, or even right now, uh, we really need uh, to, to, to maximize our social medias 
especially during this pandemic uh, season or pandemic situation. Thank you. Um, we have a question, some more technical questions from uh, Terry. Um, for the combined septage sewage treatment option, where is the inlet for septage at the wastewater treatment plant? Uh, uh, inlet at clarifier and why? Uh, for the uh, combined sewage and septage treatment facility, we have a separate area for videos. We have an, an acceptance unit, acceptance unit wherein uh, uh, it will uh, go to the process of preliminary and primary and the filtrate, uh, both for the filtrate of the, the uh, septage, uh, they, they have an EQ tank wherein uh, it will be combined with uh, the sewage. Uh, uh, sewage water or, or coming from the wastewater from the uh, conveyance system. So this is the process. Though. So they have an EQ tank where in the filtrate in the sewage water will be combined uh, prior to secondary treatment. Okay. Um, did you encounter any debris or sep septage collected? And if so, how do you prevent this from damaging uh, wastewater treatment plant <laughs> operations? For septage, actually, we cannot replicate what we are doing to to the you know, to the to the sewage wherein uh, we have interceptor box system. That is why for our sewage treatment facilities, there are already minimal debris that they are receiving in the mm -hmm. treatment facilities. Mainly because we already intercepted the, the debris in the IBS. That is why I've mentioned uh, uh, earlier that uh, every day we clean the IBS. So uh, if we don't do that, there will be no flow in the treatment facility. So for sewage, again, uh, very minimal debris that they are uh, receiving in the facility. But for septage, we cannot do that. Actually, uh, it's, it's, it's really a problem for us. It, it damages our screens, mm -hmm. our macerators, or even, even, even our pumps, mainly because uh, we really don't understand why there are a lot of debris in their septic tank. Uh, we, we ask our customers, are you flushing these items to your toilet bowl? That's why all of them ends up in your septic tank. But uh, our customers are, uh, themselves are also shocked <laughs> when they see that, uh, how, how did, does this uh, debris or garbage ends up in their septic tank? So again, what we did is uh, we, we really did some uh, innovations, ideas, or even uh, put up structures for us to be able to to intercept this debris. But currently, right now, uh, in terms of of addressing the debris, uh, all of them are entering our facility, and we re we really need to 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 you know increase the maintenance of our equipment. But uh, if we are to solve this problem again, uh, the solution here is. Uh, waste management in the LGUs. So we really need to, to you know, uh, enhance their uh, the awareness of people uh, in the you uh, know in the in the LGUs or even our customers that uh, uh, refrain from uh, flushing items in your toilet bowl, which will end up in the septic tank. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't do that. Uh, again, you will experience, you will be experiencing frequent plugging. Uh, so in this way, it will help also us uh, to protect our, uh, our equipment and facilities uh, by lessening or, or avoiding this uh, debris coming into our, coming into our facilities. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> so that, that's, uh, okay, we have one last question. I think we have four minutes left. Um, from Shin Ren, have you, have you, or has your company disclosed your treatment costs and revenue to gain public trust and boost willingness to pay the sewage treatment fee? Uh, is there a legal go or government obligation for you to do so as a way to improve cost recovery? I think uh, the numbers, in terms of numbers, uh, we are we are uh, 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 reporting it to the MWSS. So all of our numbers and data are being uh, reported to MWSS. And I the think in terms of yeah, yeah that the regulatory because uh, we are uh, 
uh, we are a regulated company. So we are, uh, we are a concession right now. So all of the data are being shared to, to MWSS. So they all knew the data. So this, this forms part of the documents you also provide for the rate rebasing exercise, which is conducted, uh, is it every five years? Yes, every five years. Yes, yeah. Um, but it's not made public, is that correct, so far? I, I think so, yes. Yeah, okay. So it remains with the regulatory commission. But yes, it remains with the MWS. Yes. Periodically, yes. yes. Okay. Um, so... Uh, there are no more questions in the chat, chat box, but um, if anybody else has any other questions, you can raise your hand. I can unmute you so that you can ask it directly. Any more questions? Okay, uh, seeing none, so I think uh, we can uh, proceed to close the, the session. Um, Thank you so much, uh, John, for uh, the presentation and patiently answering all the many questions that you've had in this session. It's been very a very active one. Um, thank you. And um, just to remind everyone, we will provide a copy of John's presentation on the community SharePoint site, as well as the link for, the, on, uh, for this recording um, and uh, all the answers to the uh, data requests that you have made. Uh, Urban uh, Sector Group is also organizing a two-week training in October on utility operations. More information on this will be emailed in the coming days. So um, on behalf of ADB's Urban and Water Sector Groups, thank you. I would like to thank Manila Water Services for developing this three-part series with us. And uh, thank you to John and all the other speakers who have shared their knowledge and to all the participants for joining us in this training series. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Thank you. Keep safe, everyone. Bye.